So what I've created <laughs> here is a fancy, nifty thing that really indicates whether you filled out this form. So with these uh, check marks here and what these X's uh, are specifying is whether you've you filled in everything. So they're not really data validation in the typical sense, but they are kind of a neat effect that when you would hit save down here, which as you can see is not hooked to anything, so probably not a good idea to press it today, but it could be hooked to something. It would go through, um, it would go through, actually it could really just go through these symbols as we'll see in a minute and tell you whether you filled everything in. Um, so one way to do this, uh, or at least the way that many people would think is that you would try to test for the length of whatever's been input and then you would reproduce either a check mark or an X. Well, I've sort of come up with a different way. It's a bit more complicated, um, but it allows us to do color changing. And it also um, allows us to do color changing without using conditional formats. And there's a good reason not to use conditional formats, um, at least on a big spreadsheet, and that is because they are um, volatile updates. So they are things that when the spreadsheet recalculates, it will have to go through and test the, um, test the uh, condition of everything within that format and make an update. So what we're going to talk about today is how to do a formula-driven method. And the way I've done that here is I've used this sort of complicated len um, d4 minus minus. So that may look very complicated from the outset. But really, um, we're going to just strip it away to its essentials. And I'll show you that it, it isn't that complicated. So the other thing to know is that these symbols here, the x and the check mark, are actually just wingdings too far. So, that, so they're over there. And we'll talk about how to get those. But I'm just going to jump over here, which just shows a 1, and this is in um, Calibri. So all that this is testing is whether the length of D4 is greater than 1. So if you've worked with Booleans before, you know length D4 is just going to grab the length. And if it's greater than 1, um, that means there's something in there. If it's equal to 0, it means there's nothing in there. If you've worked with Booleans, you know they return either a true, or I'm going to hit F2 and just move this down, as is the case here, or a false. But in this instance, because we're going to be doing something special, we don't want to uh, true or false. So we can use this minus minus shorthand, something I actually learned from Roberto. Um, and I hit enter, and that makes this a zero. Remember, there's nothing in here, so it's pulling a zero. If I move it back up, there's something in there. Now it's pulling a one. So how do we go from zero to one to check mark um, an x? So the first thing we need to do is find where this x and the check mark are. So I go to insert and I go to symbol um, and I select wingdings too and sometimes you don't really know what you what symbol you want to use so um, it's really fun just to go through all these different ones to see what are available because remember what I do here you can do with about any different symbol so you know if you want a if you want a smiley face and a sad face instead of a check mark and an X you know I say more power to you um, in this case I used a check and I used an X I, you can see they're recently inserted so um, I won't do any inserting here, um, but remember that's still in Wingding. So in Calibri uh, or any sort of normal uh, font, there's something else. And I'm not really sure what you call this weird B thing. So I hope I haven't offended any language or anything with that. I don't. I'm not really sure what that is, but we know the check marks is a check mark is a P. So the thing that we want to do is translate the. Uh, zero that X into this D thing and the check marks and check mark into the piece. So the way we do that is with custom formatting. And this actually follows along what Minda was talking about. So I'm gonna jump in. So I actually have used this formula here. And Raminda was talking about how the first semicolon will be and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this Minda, it will be something positive and then it goes something negative and then it goes zero and then it goes general X. So that's how they're normally set up. But actually, you can be you can get a little fun with them, and you can use these um, bracket equals. So in this case, I'm going to say if it, this will actually return uh, this p symbol if it equals one, and I can say bracket equals zero, and it'll actually return this d symbol. Now the trick with custom formatting applications is that you can only have two of these. So whereas you know if you go and you use the regular formatting, as is the case here. You can have up to four conditions. So as we said, it was positive, negative, zero um, in general. And I'll just sh show you. Uh, let me see if there's one where that exists. Well, these are sort of hard to read. But um, you can see here I actually have this as one of the formatting items. So remember, if it equals one, it's going to return the P. If it equals zero, it's going to return that D thing. Um, so what are these color things? Well, Excel uh, has color indexes. I think it's up to 56. And you have to actually go look these up. So color 50 is green, 
and color three is red. So I'm going to actually just turn this back, and maybe we'll, we're going to just jump it back to a regular font. So maybe we'll just try, retype, try typing this ourselves, even though we know it's already in here, because it's always good to be by example. And it's cool, um, some of the things you can do. So you can actually go um, a bit out of order, as I believe. So I think I can say equals one here, um, equals color, and I actually can do a space, 50. And then I'll just say equals P here. So you can see it came up with a P, hit OK, and you see that it actually worked. So um, in this case, all I had to do was um, put this formula, which, I, which I've created, into the custom formats. So we just jump back and reset that. And there you have it. Oh, wait, got to do one last thing. We've got to make sure this is wingdings because that's the font we're interested in. There you have it, and, and now it's easy, easy peasy. Now what's also really cool about this, remember that, we're, that these are actually zero and one, you can do something like this. You could say, well, what is, you know, what's the sum of this guy and 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 this guy? Well, we're still in wingding, so, well, it looks like, <laughs> it looks like it's coming up as a different custom, so, Well, we might have to cut that part out, <laughs> sorry. Um, when you can actually translate these back to numbers, so, um, and then you can add them up. Looks like it's not working on my example, but that's okay. We'll go back and we'll talk about that next week. Hopefully I didn't get too many srirachas off of that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, he really should you know, have. I have something, I had this, I had this working before, well, and well, I tried well. it, and I'm, it's, it's just losing, I'm losing my mind here on it, so. Please. I, I'm not going to sit here and watch you guys, watch me try to figure this one out. Right, understood, understood. But no, I didn't know about setting the colors like that. And I didn't know that conditional formatting was volatile. Uh, it is. It, it, the response is volatile. So um, what's connected to it, um, oh, you know what, let's just jump back real quick. Because it just came to me why it wasn't working. Here we go. So. <laughs> Take two. Take two, go. I like this. I like that we're on, we're live on air. Okay, so the reason it was zero before, I, you know, I freaked out because I was like, why is it zero? No, the reason is because we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I take this out, that means that nothing's been filled in. So let's just do this real quick. I'm going to just put these in here. Looks like I did something here. And this is, this works and then I jump back to it and it stops working. Well. Let's, I'll stop embarrassing myself, and we will go back to this. I am interested in that formula. Yeah, I'm interested in take uh, three next week. No, we'll get this working. Something. Oh, really? <laughs> I, did something I did something unfortunate here, um, but we will. We the will only guy, working. the only guy who didn't give a tip this week is a guy who's razzing you. Well, that's fine. Right. Well, listen, you know, here's the thing. I should be embarrassed, but I knew no, I knew no, that this would happen. No, no. At you some point on air, so tell, no, no. I tell you what, now, no, because when you when you do training, that's that happens, that happens, <laughs> and I, I have been in there, you know, in front of people, and then something is not working right, something is weird, then you find out what you some apostrophe is treating something <laughs> as text, and that's why something is not summing right, and you're standing in front of all those people who paid money, and they're looking at you. You know what? Hey. Hey, just crack a joke. That's, that's the demo gods. So how about this, Oz? Two. How two about who? sriraches. Two, okay. Two, two, that's fine. Two sriraches. Oh, man. oh that's hard. <laughs> you, know you know what? I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what. False modesty is not attractive. It's not attractive at all. False so, modesty? You know so, I mean... Every damn bit of fire. Yeah, what's right? up? Because <laughs> I'm going to use this thing. I'm going to use it because I see an, an, an application right now for changing these colors. I see I didn't it. know you could do so, that. Yeah. We're going to just, you know what? We're going to just jump back real quick because I got it. I got it here. I know what the problem was. 
Okay, so I was not entering text before, so it wasn't coming up. So you got to enter text. So you hear, you see it goes 5, 4, 3. Now, what's cool about that? Well, you know if you have six metrics, all you got to do is put this test figure here and say, does this equal six when you save? And that means everything's been filled in. Of course, you got to do other validation. And also, you can do things like, you know, I don't know. This is going to be uh, a uh, Roberto-style um, uh, uh, tip here, but say well, we're going to say all filled in. So I'm going to say repeat. So that's the repeat function, right? But I only want to repeat this once, assuming it equals six. So we, if we make this equal to six, and you should probably do a little. I mean, this is a hard formula to figure out. Let's see, does it work? No, it didn't work. So um, that is because nothing is, not everything's equal to six. See, it's perfect. <laughs> I've taken away one of the two sriracha. So what's look this? At that. Hold that on, is that awesome. Is... Hey, no. <laughs> did it work? <laughs> oh, it worked. It worked. You hey. probably want to do okay, the reverse, yeah. actually. You want to do the reverse and say not filled in. Five so sriracha. <laughs> you got to work that time. That's good. No, I did. I take one of these. I'm going to tear this up. Myself. I saved myself. Almost like that. Almost All right. Like that. I tell you. And That's I why I record my videos. I can edit it then. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you know, I wasn't even thinking about doing that, and I thought, oh, I'm on a roll. I'm on fire. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump <laughs> into this, and I'm gonna do this tip. And I'm like, oh, you know, I probably should. I'm wearing a tie. It's on. Yeah, people just sitting and looking at you. <laughs> yeah. Just looking. That's Can right. you see the sweat? <laughs> <laughs> I, I,